The Karin Sorcery Sword is a unique weapon in Elden Ring. It is a sword with a thrusting sword moveset that is also a catalyst for spell casting. While it's cool to introduce an Elden Ring equivalent of Blue Flame, the best reason to use the sword is not because of the damage numbers it puts out, but because a solo sword casting playstyle is only attainable through this weapon. You can grab the Karian Sorcery Sword right when you get into the DLC. Take the shortcut around Castle Ensis and get into Shadow Altus without fighting Relana. Start at the High Road Cross site of Grace and head west to the bottom of the cliff. Head south to the waterfall and then jump back onto the castle to open the chest where this weapon rests. The moveset is weird and may mess with your muscle memory. This thrusting sword has a full light attack thrusting sword moveset and impaling thrust as an ash of war. The heavy attack has been replaced with the ability to cast. There were multiple instances where I tried to use a heavy attack, but ended up casting a slow spell, causing me to take a few hits. So be cognizant of the new button layout and rely on the Ash of War for your heavy hits. Strangely, there is one heavy attack that remains on the weapon. You can still perform the heavy jumping attack, but only when you dismount jump from your horse. Yeah, I don't get it either. The Ash of War cannot be changed on the weapon, despite this not being a somber weapon. And Impaling Thrust is not a bad move to be stuck with. It has a cheap cost, so we can spam it to our heart's content with the amount of FP we have on this build. Impaling Thrust is fast, and by far our best option for poise breaking. The only downside I can name for it is that you can miss your enemy if you're not looking towards them when you activate the Ash. I used a diverse set of spells in this build. Ronnie's Dark Moon is a great opener. It lowers the target's magic defense and adds a ton of frostbite buildup. Adula's Moonblade has great range, attacks in a wide arc, and can also build up frostbite. Karium Piercer is perfect for catching enemies after they've been knocked down. Comet is a huge long-range projectile that may not be FP efficient, but is very fun to look at. And Rolana's Twin Moons will stun many enemies and leave them open for a follow-up attack. Along with dealing more damage than any other spell in this arsenal, our playstyle will vary depending on whom we're fighting. Opening up with Ronnie's Dark Moon works whether we use spells or melee, since our thrusting sword attacks also deal mostly magical damage. For many late-game bosses such as Radon and Mikola, sticking with a thrust Thrusting sword moveset is the optimal way to handle these fights. Thrust damage also happens to be their weakness, and the thrusting sword moveset is great at capitalizing on tight attack windows. For NPC fights, all we really need is Rolana's Twin Moons and Karian Piercer. Open up with Twin Moons to knock your opponent to the ground, and if they are still alive, follow up with a charged Karian Piercer. Just be sure to have some of your best armor on in case they land a hit or two during the cast. With all this spell casting, you may come to the realization that the sorcery scaling of of the Karian Sorcery Sword is not great, especially when compared to something like the Karian Regal Scepter. I tested out the damage difference between the two, and the Scepter does more damage by a wide margin. To remedy this, we can cast with the Scepter in our left hand and the Sword in our right, but that just turns our build into a Thrusting Sword Spellcaster, missing a heavy attack. As a compromise, I offhanded the Scepter to get the boost to Full Moon Sorcery it provides, while still maintaining the cool factor of casting from a sword. It may be below the damage potential we can obtain, but it still preserves the uniqueness of the build. To compensate for this lack of damage, I used a couple consumables throughout my run, those being the Hefty Rot Pot to inflict Scarlet Rot, and the Kukri to keep Poise down at a distance. Before we get into stats and talismans, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the build videos, and leave any experiences you may have with this weapon in the comments down below. There are many ways to build around any weapon in Elden Ring, and I'd love to hear if anyone has a different setup from mine. My talisman setup focused on the light attacks of the Karian Sorcery Sword as our main form of damage. We had the two-handed sword talisman to boost the moveset damage by 15%, the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia for a successive attack power boost, the Dragon Crest Great Shield to help tank a hit or two during a long spell cast, and the two-headed turtle talisman to regen stamina quickly so we may keep poking at the enemy. The Magic Shroud and Cracked tier is a must-have since most of our damage is magic damage, and this will boost said damage by 20%. For my build, I used either the Opaline Hard tier or the Bloodsuck and Cracked tier. Feel free to switch out this second slot, whatever you feel like switching between offense and defense. For our stats at RL170, we had 60 Vigor, 30 Mind, 30 Endurance, 19 dexterity to use the weapon, and 80 intelligence, since this is where our damage scaling comes from. The Karian Sorcery Sword will not give you the best sorcery damage in the game. It is the definition of jack-of-all-trades, master of none. But just because it isn't the best at anything in particular, it doesn't mean you won't have fun using a weapon that's so different from anything you'll find in the lands between. 